What would happen if you could stop worrying so much about what your team was doing all day and instead focus in on what you're supposed to be doing to move your business forward? Sounds like a dream, but right now you're living the nightmare of having to overcoach, overhandhold, and overcheck in on your team's work. Let's put an end to that and instead roll out super clear 5R work plans, drum beats, and more of my signature tools that drive accountability and self-sufficiency deep into your team. All you have to do is join a Leadership Lab program, and I'll help you turn your team troubles into triumphs. You'll be learning and growing alongside some peers that will become valuable business friends. So why not go beyond this podcast and join us? It could be the smartest thing you do this year. Book a call with me and see what program would best fit you over at the website, stackingyourteam.com slash programs. Hello, leader. Today, we're talking about those first 90 days of taking on new responsibilities. So whether you have a new person joining your team or you've promoted someone into a new role, those 90 days are both magical and critical. Welcome to the Stacking Your Team podcast. I'm your host, Shelley Warren. I've worked with so many business owners over the years, and they all have the same secret to spill when we first meet. They have team troubles. Yes, it's a secret they've been keeping for a long while because most of their peers and family don't believe them. You see, from the outside, everything looks fabulous. They've built a wonderful reputation, a strong following of delighted clients and customers. They've created a brand that resonates with people, and the proof is in their revenues. But the truth is, they're struggling to lead people, and they've pretty much been around the block and back with team turnover. They admit that they're proud of the small business they've built. And yet at the same time, they're so tired of trying to grow without an agile team who are happy to work alongside them. They know that they need a team, but not just any team. And just like you, they're ready to learn how to lead in such a way that fits their perspective as a woman who owns a business, runs a second shift on the home front, and wants to create a legacy for their family and community for years to come. So let's hold hands and jump in together with today's episode. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. Let's start our conversation today with two things for you. The first one, I've got some live events coming up. So be sure to learn about them by signing up for our weekly newsletter. Just click the link that's in the episode description. And by the way, those events are both in person and virtual. The second thing I have for you today, well, I'm sure you can guess what it is. Did you know that the team that got you here may not be the team that will get you there? (laughs) Okay, let's talk about those first 90 days. Boy, oh boy, it's the time when a new hire can feel the heat of everyone watching them, waiting to see evidence that they really are the best person for the role. It's also the time when whomever made the hiring decision is watching and waiting to see evidence that they weren't duped and that they really can pick them. And if you've ever been promoted into a new role, you felt the pressure of putting your money where your mouth is and demonstrating that you've got what it takes to get results in that role. The first 90 days, uh uh-huh, it's a big deal. That time frame is used extensively around the globe as a critical marker. It's often used as the standard probation period for a lot of companies. But why 90 days? Why not 60 or 30? Well, mainly because 90 days is enough time for that team member to demonstrate their capabilities. And for you, the person who hired them, it's enough time to undercover gaps, worrying behavior, and even secret skills. 90 days is also a full quarter. So it's provided a full range of what typically happens in your business. You know, the ebb and flow of your operations. And it's enough time for your new hire to see how you lead. 
It's also a good amount of time for a new hire to interact with the full team and to rally around the mission and rise to the challenge where needed. All of this helps you, the leader, make the next big decision. Do I keep this person or do I let them go? Now, of course, during those first 90 days, there would be thoughtful onboarding baked right in to your new hire experience that you're offering. You would have provided them real work that matches the long-term responsibilities for their role. Sometimes the new hire spends way too much time focused on basic tasks that don't showcase their capabilities at all. You know, no stretching tasks, no tasks that impact their peers or your clients. It's unfortunate that this is their onboarding experience because it doesn't clearly help them decide if they want to stay, nor does it clearly show you if you want them to. A better 90-day onboarding experience would have started with training and testing and evaluating a new team member's ability to learn the core duties of the role. And then we would migrate them over into other tasks that link to those core tasks that they've just mastered. You know, essentially showing them how important their core activities are, who their role impacts, and where they could potentially be a bottleneck for someone else. New people like to know how what they do fits into the larger picture, those big goals of the business. There's a lot to learn and then apply during those first few months. As the trainer or the leader, you're wanting to look for a few key factors that will prompt you to up-level their tasks, truly giving them an opportunity to shine. But first, You'll want to know, here we go, drum roll please, it's the biggest question ever, here it is. Is the person that I met in the interview and described on the resume real? Honestly, that's it in a nutshell. We've all been caught off guard, suddenly realizing that the resume was embellished the stories told were exaggerated, and the skill set isn't as glorious as they led us to believe. All the more reason why the first 90 days during your onboarding is so important. So here's a list of a few behaviors that you'll want to see and ask your trainers, ask your extended team members, and even ask your clients during those specific set points during their first 90 days. Here they are. Can they learn new skills and then apply them consistently? Can they listen to feedback and grow from it? Can they anticipate what comes next and then execute it? Can they remember why they're doing the task? Can they prioritize their work plan every day? Have you seen some signs where they've been able to be agile with the ever-changing needs of your business? And have you seen signs that they can be self-sufficient? They can compound their learning, taking one new thing and seeing how it helps them master the next new thing. You'll also want to be assured that they feel comfortable working with you. Is the trainer, the team, and clients treating them well? Does your new hire feel seen and heard? You know, you've heard me say it before here on the podcast, but it's worth repeating. Culture is queen in any workplace. And setting your new hire off on the right foot from day one is priceless. Deciding if this new person is a long-term fit within 90 days or even sooner is so much more feasible than finding out six months or maybe later. For them too, people are your biggest asset and your biggest investment. So let's plan in processes to notice and then provide feedback about the performance early on. You know, recently, I had a former client tell me that she was struggling with a new hire who was showing signs that they were lacking common sense. Now, I've been known to say that you can't teach common sense. You either have it or you don't. But that was before I realized that so many of our young people who are joining the workforce simply have not been given the opportunity to think for themselves. They've been protected, coddled, and so much about the real world dilemmas have been solved for them 
or barriers broken down so they don't even encounter anything too difficult. Okay, I admit, not every young person has lived a privileged life. Many have had it really hard, but a good majority of them have been safeguarded, and those adults that did everything they could to shelter them from the harsh crew world did not do them any favors. But I digress. So back to the story. This new team member had the credentials for the role and was chosen as the best candidate following a pretty robust interview and hiring process. Yet within their first 90 days, it was apparent that they couldn't take the right step, connect the dots for decision making, or follow standards consistently. It was frustrating for sure for that CEO and the extended team, especially as this team member was providing services for clients and had a full roster. So the CEO asked me, how do I hire for common sense and problem solving ability? Well, it all starts with those reference checks. I'm shocked how many of you continue to skip this step when it could shed some bright light on a potential problem. By asking the former employer a few questions about their availability, their biggest impact that they had there, and whether they would even welcome them back, the answers to those questions can really cause the employer to open up and share even more insights. Having this practical and relevant information is priceless to have before you make your final decision and a job offer. Another point of concern the CEO told me about was that she finds it hard to end things when the new team member has clients that they're serving. I get it, but it's so worth it to cut ties early and redeploy those clients to another team member who will undoubtedly serve them at a higher level anyways. I encouraged her to bless and release this team member within a few days, and then she asked, how do I avoid common sense issues in the future though? Here's what I told her. Build in some initial tasks and projects that test those new hires in week one and in week two. And don't hesitate to make it difficult. You wanna see them shine early on and often. So this could look like giving the new person the task of organizing a storage room or creating an action plan to host an in-person outreach event to attract new clients and customers. In the storage room project, you'd be looking for the person to create an inventory tracking spreadsheet that highlights multiples and low stock. You'd want to see uniformity in labeling, storing like-for-like -like items together, and putting frequently used items in the front for easy access. Of course, you'd watch for safety issues like trip hazards, overloading shelving, or topsy-turvy stacking methods. For the outreach event, you'd be looking for the person to question her teammates to see what's been done in the past, what worked, what didn't work. You'd also be looking for them to ask you or a leadership team member if there was a particular local partner, such as a physician, a school, maybe a law firm, or a vendor that you're wanting to build a deeper relationship with. It's the background information gathering that you're looking for. You're wanting them to not rinse and repeat an event, but rather take into consideration what worked well and then build on that. Throwing up social media posts and tacking some balloons on your door just isn't gonna cut it. Another idea could look like creating a new training video or training resource that they believe would help the next new person who joins your team. This would involve looking to see if there was already a resource and questioning why they didn't use it and if they did, what didn't work well for them. Maybe it was tough to find the resource in your electronic files. So what can be done to enhance it? Maybe better photos, a voiceover, better examples of good, better, best. And of course, in all of these examples, you would not hold their hand. Rather, you'd give them some direction as to the best outcome, and then sit back and watch them in action. Your conversation could sound like this. That storage room is a nightmare. I'm afraid something's going to fall over, and I'm also worried that we're buying items that we actually have, but we just can't find them in there. 
So what about the person who has recently shifted into a new role and you're wanting to witness them stepping up their contribution and especially their thought process for what their priorities are? Oh my gosh, this is my jam. I love helping women who have taken on new responsibilities be more clear and confident about what's expected and what they can do to reinforce that they are the best person for this role. In our team leader program, It's designed to support your leaders. The people who take advantage of this clearly show up in their roles with a broader perspective and better people skills. The tools they can leverage greatly accelerate their success and their leaders appreciate not having to create the trainings or tools because I'm doing that for them. Now, I'm currently working with a local leader who's been promoted into her first big leadership role. Each week, she visits me at my office and we whip out the whiteboard. I love this style of teaching. It's interactive and gets her thinking about the step changes she can take to double down on her influence and decision making while still building deeper relationships with people at work. We're maximizing her first 90 days in the role and it's wonderful that her leader spotted her potential and wants to support her in this way. Do you have a leader on your team that might benefit for some one-to-one time with me? Why not reach out to me at leader at stackingyourteam.com and tell me what would look like help to you. So what can you do to see your newly promoted team member demonstrate their common sense, ownership, and commitment to helping you build the business? Let's add in some immediate projects and tasks that get them thinking differently about what they do. This could look like a cost savings project. After all, the people closest to the work know the most about the work, right? So why not challenge them to find where you're overspending, underspending, and my favorite, going after those slow pays, no pays, and bounced payments. Or here's a favorite. How about tasking them to improve your meeting structure? Maybe implement a zero meeting day on a drumbeat or improve your meetings agendas even more to reduce the duration of your meetings? Or how about having them clean up and reinforce your Slack channel expectations? It could also look like having this person do some data mining to uncover discrepancies with client or team scheduling, maybe having a look at your email unsubscribes and why, lost orders or out of stock items that you've been waiting too long for and going after them. You might ask them to do a bit of data mining to uncover who your VIPs are in terms of lifetime value clients and customers. You know, those people who've been with you a long time, who bring friends and who are first in line for the upsell opportunity. Why not have this leader truly understand who these people are and then design some strategies to double down on your appreciation for them? I've recently added a few free resources to the website, and one of them that is super popular and relevant to today's podcast is the Spot Your Leader Assessment. This 10-minute or less assessment is designed for you to quickly notice if someone on your team is ready to take on new responsibilities, and it accompanies episode 276. While you're there grabbing that one, why not get the next level assessment? So this one I titled, Leverage Your Advanced Leaders. It's the same look, feel, and style, 10 minute or less assessment. And it was matched up to episode 277. I did those episodes back to back. Now that episode and assessment is perfect for you to recognize if the person you just promoted into a role that requires more responsibility is meeting or exceeding your expectations. Both of these assessments are quick and easy to complete. When you use them as a self-assessment tool, they're even more effective as you'll compare your ratings with the rating that your team member gave themselves. And that always sparks a great conversation. So click the links in the episode description or head on over to the website and see what other resources we have available to you there too at stackingyourteam.com. So let's not waste time, energy, and money trying to keep someone who's not a long-term fit for a role, either a new hire or a newly promoted person. And you know, it's not so great for them either. 
So as we close out today's episode, here's your next best step to take action on what you just learned today. How about asking your admin person to whip up a Google form and send it to your most recent people who joined your team? On that form, ask three questions. Number one, what helped you ramp up the most in your role when you first joined us? Number two, early on, what caused you the most worry as you were learning your role? And number three, what's the one thing we could do better at when welcoming a new person to our team? And you want to invite them to be candid. Your admin can then theme the responses and share a summary with you. You can also make the form anonymous. And before I let you go, one more reminder to get over and grab those free resources for you. You know, leadership can be exciting, challenging, and lonely at times. So don't go it alone. Let me help you create the team and the leadership structure that you've been craving. So until next time, remember, if you have a dream, you need a team. So let's get stacking yours today.